First question is from Elena Badina. What are your thoughts on the Whole30? Have you ever put a client on it? I actually, um, when I think back to all the different diets that are out there, diet books and protocols, I would have to say that um, as a trainer, like you, you typically are, are customizing everybody's nutrition plan. But if there was ever something that I just pointed someone in a direction, like maybe they weren't, they didn't hire me, they had questions. I've actually pointed more people towards Whole30 than almost any other diet out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just think that the, the, the principles behind it are really, really solid and probably aligns the most with the philosophy that I would teach my clients. We've talked on the show many times about, you know, I, I remember having clients and they'd come back and they'd be, they would be struggling with the diet and I'd be kind of asking them, oh, well, you know, I, I, I'm eating good. And then I find out they're eating out here or they're, they're eating these things that I think are just really tough to track and they're processed foods. And I'm like, oh, they're probably also under reporting. And I'd be like, listen, you can eat, instead of us trying to calculate and count when you're going out to the, like mm -hmm. eat whole foods, your own whole foods. It food. targets the major offender, right? It does, away, it does. Which is great. Mm -hmm. And then, and then it, it focuses you on like having to go get food, which is better than eliminate this, eliminate that. Like I need to be able to get more of these whole foods. How do I do this? I totally. have to actually cook it. Totally. And it's like, it brings it back to that simple thing where if you're in charge of like, you know, chopping everything yourself and, and putting it together, it's a much more... More intimate and and you and you, uh, you know much more sustainable. I think that I, I think you nailed it right on the head right there with the 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 part that we learned later on. I think as trainers was when you when you tell clients they have to eat this really restrictive diet, they they have a hard time with that because it, it still it just feeds into that whole I can I can't have things and or like a punishment thing or it's only because I'm on this diet right now and then I'm going to be off the diet eventually versus. You know, I I figured this out later on of like, oh, right away when I would start to adjust someone's uh, diet, I would actually never take away. It would I would start to infuse things into the diet. So instead of me saying like, oh, no more of that McDonald's or no more of that, I'd say what I want you to do is start eating, you know, a two cups of broccoli a day. What I found out and I figure or I figured out was if they ate a certain way and that was they're very consistent, even if that's bad, you know, bad choices like eating fast food and stuff but they never sat down and had you know two cups of broccoli in their day. When I asked them to eat two cups of broccoli, it naturally would eliminate something that was bad in the diet or that was mm -hmm. you know inferior to that as far as nutrient-wise, right? So instead of actually telling clients like, oh, you can't have these things, like saying, hey, listen, you know, whole, these whole foods, go to town, eat these foods, you know, enjoy them, eat till you're full. Like, and it does, they don't feel like you're restricting them. You're just kind of putting parameters of like, Hey, let's stay away from like all the processed box things and eat around these whole foods. And I, I've had a lot of success. I've had a lot of clients that have had a lot of success with it. Um, I think, um, they notice a big difference. I think they notice the satiety. Um, I think that it speaks to the point that Sal always brings up that, you know, processed foods are, are, are hijacking your, your body's natural systems that tell you that you're full. So when you eat whole foods, it's a lot harder to do that, even if you do season up and stuff like that, which does that a little bit, but well, not to the same extent. Well, what I like about Whole30 is, and I do like it, I, I would agree with you guys. I think it's, it's if you had to pick a diet, um, mm -hmm. that would be the one that I would say pick. And here's what I like about them, is that they have a an elimination diet um, kind of built into it. And mm -hmm. so what I mean by that is they allow they tell you to remove the common offenders that people tend to have issues with. Uh, things like, you know, like like uh, certain uh, grains like gluten for example. Remove those out of your diet for the first 30 days. After 30 days is up, reintroduce some of these common offenders and then see how your body reacts and responds. And I like this because it brings a new level of awareness to a person. A lot of people don't realize that they're eating foods that they have digestive issues from or there's certain foods that cause them to feel a particular way. And so when they eliminate them for 30 days and then reintroduce them 30 days later, they start to pay attention to how they feel and they start to notice like, oh, wait a minute. When I eat lots of bread, I just don't feel good. Uh, my body doesn't feel good or my appetite gets out of whack or my mood's kind of whatever. Maybe that's what happens when I eat bread. Let me take it back out and see what happens. Whole30 does that, and that's the part of Whole30 that I like the most. It has that elimination component kind of built in. Most diets cut things out, leave them out. Um, Whole30 doesn't necessarily do that. It cuts things out, and then it says reintroduce them slowly and see how you feel. 
So uh, I like it. I like it for that. I think people have had a lot of success as a result. It's not foolproof, of course, mm. but it's good to know how your body feels because, you know, the way you digest things is, is very individual. The way you react to foods can be very individual. There's a psychological component that's very individual. Some foods may be psychologically triggering for you. There's also the, your metabolism um, and how your body works with these foods, your, your microbiome. It's all like a fingerprint. So, you know, Adam and I may go and eat a meal, and that meal may make him feel different than it makes me feel. And I'm talking about everything from physiological differences. He may, I may get bloated from a meal that he feel fine from, or I may get tired, or I may feel bad, or I may just have an emotional connection to that food, and it triggers me to eat a lot of other foods. That's also something that we, that we have. We have emotional triggers. So it's good. I like that component. You take things out, reintroduce them see how you feel, it gives them a little bit more of a sense of awareness than most diets tend to do. Yeah, I like that it has, like, it's a strategy at the end of the day. Like, I look at diets as a way to kind of provide a structure if you're unstructured in the way that you're eating. And so it helps you to kind of, you know, really take that mindful time and, and experience, like, and, and pay attention to the signs and symptoms of what your body's telling mm -hmm. you through that process. Yeah, here's the, here's the foods that they cut out in the first 30 days. I brought it up. I just wanted to be... 100%. So it's dairy, grains, alcohol, legumes, added sugars, carrageenan, MSG, and sulfites, and then junk food. Now, those are the most um, common offenders in terms of making people feel bad or giving them a food intolerance. Like dairy is a big one for me. Um, other people, it could be legumes. All, you Basically, if you're looking at people with their food intolerances, those foods right there probably cover, mm -hmm. including the, the, the preservatives like MSG and stuff, those probably cover, I don't know, I would estimate 75 to 85% of the most common you know, issues that people have with food. So when you cut those out and then you reintroduce them one at a time after 30 days, like, okay, I'm, I'm done with my 30 days. Let me reintroduce dairy real slow because that's what the Whole30 tells you to do. And then you start to notice like, oh, uh, that's where I'm getting the bloat. That's where my bloat was coming from. It's from dairy. Now you know. Now you know what, what's causing these issues mm -hmm. and you can eliminate them or, or keep them in if you want. So that component is really what makes me enjoy it the most. It's the, it's the, it's the biggest commercial uh, you know, kind of elimination diet protocol that I've seen. Otherwise, I haven't seen too many that have that kind of commercial viability.